Good afternoon, this is Mercedes Franks from the Nacogdoches Public Library, uh, welcoming you to the next episode of the Study Group for Citizenship exam. Uh, the past few weeks, we have been looking at the USCIS website and then also using the flashcards to study for the civics portion of the exam. Uh, this week, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Uh, we are going to play Civics Jeopardy. So if you've ever seen the game show Jeopardy, uh, we're gonna do it in that same format. I will be your Alex today. And uh, rather than answering uh, trivia questions, we are going to be doing the civics portions of the civics exam. And so uh, we will have an opportunity to uh, ask the same questions that are on the flashcards, give you an opportunity to answer the questions, and uh, then give you a chance to call us and tell us what your results were and possibly get some prizes. Okay, so we'll begin shortly. All right, so now we're gonna begin a round of Let's Play Civics Jeopardy. It's gonna be a little bit different from the show, but we're going to do our best. We're gonna use the flashcards that we normally do, uh, but we're gonna do it in a Jeopardy style game. So let's begin. All right, so this is Civics Jeopardy. Our categories are presidents, rights and responsibilities, Oh, beautiful for spacious skies. Who and how, what and why. So we'll get started in just a moment. All right, so similar to Jeopardy, uh, we're gonna have uh, different categories. Uh, we're gonna start off with uh, $100. Category is gonna be presidents. So a little bit different uh, where you get the question first and then we'll give the answer. So question 70 from your list of flashcards, who was the first president? Who was the first president? And you'll notice that this question has an asterisk. So that means that if you are 65 years of age at least and meet the residency requirements, you only have to study the questions with the asterisk. Everybody else has to study all of them, but you only have to study these questions with the asterisk. So again, question 70, who was the first president? So our answer is, the first president of the United States was George Washington. George Washington was the first president of the United States. Very good, so now we'll go on to our next question. All right, so we're back to the Civics Jeopardy homepage. Uh, let's try, oh beautiful for spacious skies, geography and landmarks. We'll take question for uh, $400. Question 71, what territory did the United States buy from France in 1803? So, oh beautiful for spacious skies, question 71. What territory did the United States buy from France in 1803? Okay. So take a look at that and let's see what the answer is. The correct answer is the Louisiana Purchase Territory. So the Louisiana Purchase Territory. Okay. Very good, we'll do one more before we take a little break. Okay. Uh, we're gonna go with who and how, or how and who. Uh, let's do $100. Question 24. Who does a U.S. Senator represent? Who does a U.S. Senator represent? Okay, so that's question 24 in your flashcards if you keep keeping track. Who does a U.S. Senator represent? All the people of the state. All the people of the state. So you want to make sure you understand uh, what a what uh, what elected official uh, this is. Uh, and there are several different places that you can go to find out who your elected officials are. One really good website is Who Represents Me. 
It's one that you can put in your address and it'll tell you all of your elected officials at the state and national level. And then uh, at the local level, you can always check the Daily Sentinel and you'll find the information there. Or you can call the library and we can tell you who your elected official is. I went to uh, talk about the census. Remember, it's a reminder that the 2020 census is due uh, this year. Uh, it's a count of all the people that are living here in the United States. And it's important that everybody gets counted because this is what determines our representation in Washington, as well as funding for hospitals, schools, roads, uh, all that important infrastructure. So it's important that you're counted. If you haven't already, please be sure to fill out your form. You can do it online or by telephone, and pretty soon there'll be census workers uh, going door to door to help you fill out your form if you haven't already. But you can avoid all that simply by uh, completing your form yourself. Uh, there is assistance available in multiple languages, so don't forget to complete your Census 2020 and be counted. And we're back from our commercial break, uh, so let's continue our Civics Jeopardy. Uh, this time uh, we're going to do Rights and Responsibilities. Let's do question 300, or for $300, let's do uh, Rights and Responsibilities. So question 57. When must all men register for the Selective Service? When must all men register for the Selective Service? Okay. So again, question 57, when must all men register for the Selective Service? And if you're unfamiliar with the Selective Service might be, uh, there is a website, the Selective Service website, where you can go in and see uh, what Selective Service is who needs to register for it, and what are the implications if you don't register, uh, and then also the advantages of registering. It'll also tell you where you go to register if you don't have a computer or, uh, or if you just want information about it, okay? So we're going to find out the answer. Okay. All right, so young men, or men must register at age 18, so when they turn 18 years old, or when they are between the ages of 18 and 26 years of age. So those are your uh, acceptable responses at your exam. You can answer at age 18 years of age, or between ages 18 and 26 years of age. Okay. Very good. All right, so we're going back to our question bank. Uh, we're going to do how and who. Uh, let's do question uh, this question over here for three hundred dollars. Okay. Question thirty: If the president can no longer serve, who becomes president? If the president can no longer serve. Who becomes president? So you know who the president of the United States is. And so the question is, if the president can no longer serve, who would be the next person to serve? Okay, this question is worth $300. And the answer is the vice president. So the vice president would serve if the president can no longer serve. And so a bonus question is, who is our current vice president? Okay. So think about that. And the answer is Mike Pence. Okay. All right, our next question is gonna come from the category of what and why. What and why. We're gonna take it for $300. Okay. Great question. Question 25, why do some states have more representation than other states? Why do some states have more representation than other states? And I'm sorry I didn't give you as much time with that question as I normally do, but okay. So that is because of the state's population, so the more more people a state has, the more representatives they get. 
Another acceptable answer is because they have more people. Or because some states have more people. And so all these questions are related to the census, which we talked about in our commercial. So that's why it's very important that everybody complete their census. Uh, so the census determines how many people or is a count of how many people there are living in the United States at a particular point in time. And so that helps to determine representation. Very good. So we're going to take another break and we'll get back to you in just a few minutes. Once again, we wanted to remind you that even though the library remains closed to the public, you can still get many of the library services. Uh, a lot of it is by order ahead and pickup. If you don't already have a library card, you can get one. Uh, we can issue you a library card with just by verifying a few uh, pieces of information. So give us a call at 559-2970 and we can get you started with the library card. Or if you already have one, we can uh, place an order for books, DVDs. And then we also have free copies of the book Circe and then also some story time craft bags. Uh, so we're still here, even though the uh, interior of the library is closed, we're still here to serve you. Welcome back. And so we return to our Civics Jeopardy. Uh, we're going to go to our next category, uh, which is going to be rights and responsibilities. Uh, let's start off with the $100 question. Rights and responsibilities for $100, please. Thanks. Question 55. What are two ways that Americans can participate in their democracy? What are two ways that Americans can participate in their democracy? Okay, so notice that there are, there are probably going to be several possibilities, but you just need to know two of them. Vote. And when you become a citizen, you will probably give, be given a voter registration card. Be, be sure to go ahead and fill it out at that time so you don't forget. Also remember that if you uh, need another voter registration card, maybe uh, you didn't fill one out or maybe you need one for somebody else that's eligible, uh, the library has voter registration cards and you can usually get some at the post office as well. Uh, so that is one right and responsibility for U.S. citizens. You can also participate in your new government by joining a political party. You can help your favorite candidate in their campaign efforts. So you can help with the campaign. You can join a civic group. So there are many groups that you can join to help improve your community. You can run for office. You can write to a newspaper, so you have an opinion about something, you can write your local newspaper and express your opinion. You can publicly support or oppose an issue or policy. So again, you can do that as well by uh, writing to the newspaper or just, uh, just stating your opinion. You can join a community group, and there are many groups here in Nacogdoches. You can call senators and representatives. Let uh, your senator or representative know how you feel about a particular issue. And the last one, you can give an elected official your opinion on an issue. So it's pretty similar to what we just said, uh, but it's very important that you do participate in your government. Uh, notice that we have an election coming up in November. Uh, if you decide to vote once you become a citizen and you're eligible to vote, uh, make sure that uh, you register in time. Uh, but as you can see, we have uh, several rights and responsibilities as, as citizens. Very good. So now we're going to go back to our question bank. Okay. Uh, now we're going to go to, uh, let's continue with the theme of rights and responsibilities. Let's go to a $300 question. And question 57, when must all men register for the selective service? Actually, I think we already did that one. And we said that was at age 18. Okay. 
between 18 and 26 years of age. And remember that you can always go on the Selective Service website to find out more about who must register and what it's for and what are the benefits of registering. So we'll uh, go back to our question bank. And this time we're gonna say uh, presidents for $200. Okay, so for $200. Question 27, in what month do we vote for president? In what month do we vote for president? Okay, we have an election coming up this year in November. Oops, I'm sorry, I gave you the answer. In November, we vote for president as well as other offices. So be sure when you uh, get your citizenship and you're eligible to vote that you uh, register to vote in plenty of time for the election that you're interested in voting for. And don't forget that we have local elections as well as state elections and national elections. All the elections are important and so it's uh, important to be sure that you're registered to vote. Uh, so now we're going to take a little break and uh, we'll come back to our game in just a few minutes. The Nacogdoches Library offers free downloadable ebooks and e-audiobooks. Call any library staff person at 559-2970 to find out how you can get started today. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to do a few more questions before we conclude for this afternoon. Uh, we are going to go to what and why, the category of what and why. And so we're going to start off with question uh, worth $100, what and why. Question 15, who is in charge of the executive branch? Who is in charge of the executive branch? Okay. And so let's find out who is in charge of the executive branch. Remember there are three branches of government, the judicial, executive, and legislative branch. And so we want to know who is in charge of the executive branch. And that is the president. And so right now we know that our president is uh, Donald Trump. And so the president is in charge of the executive branch. Very good. Okay. Uh, one more question from the what and why category. We just did one and we're going to do another one. We're going to do the one that is worth Okay, let's take another question from the what and why. Let's take a question for $200. Question 44. What is the capital of your state? What is the capital of your state? Okay. And notice that this is another question that has the asterisk. So that means that if you're 65 and older, the, you only have to study these questions. Remember, everybody else has to study all of them. So question 44, what is the capital of your state? Okay, and for Texas, that capital is Austin. Okay, Austin is the capital of our state. Okay, very good. Let's do uh, one more question in this uh, category. Uh, question uh, worth $500. Let's try that one. All right, so it's a daily double question. Uh, question 14. What stops one branch of government from becoming too powerful? What stops one branch of government from becoming too powerful? Remember, we have three branches of government. We have the executive, the judicial, and the legislative. Legislative, And so we want to know what stops one branch of government from becoming too powerful. Let's find out what that is. Okay. There are two possible answers. Checks and balances. and separation of powers. So you can answer in either of those manners and you would be answering correctly. Okay, wonderful. We're gonna take a little break 
and then we'll continue. Don't forget to pick up your free copy of Circe, available in the library. Okay, we're going to go back to the uh, category of presidents. Uh, this time we're going to go for a question worth $300 in the category of presidents. What is the name of the President of the United States? What is the name of the President of the United States? Again, this is another question with the asterisk, so only uh, if you're 65 and older, you'll only have to study those. So what is the name of our current President of the United States? Let's find out if you're not already aware who that is. Okay, three ways you can answer that would be acceptable. Donald J. Trump. Donald Trump. Or simply using the president's last name of Trump. Very good. And the last question that we're going to do for this afternoon, also in the category of presidents, this one's worth $500 see what that is. Okay. Question 34. Who vetoes bills? Who vetoes bills? All right, so who vetoes bills? If you're unfamiliar with this concept of vetoing a bill, uh, we do have several books that we'll be using throughout the series that will help explain what a bill is and uh, what it means to veto a bill. Uh, but who vetoes the bills? The answer to that is the president vetoes bills. Okay, so the president vetoes bills and that is
Okay, we're gonna conclude with a reminder that although we don't have an official textbook for this uh, series of classes, uh, I do encourage you to come to the library and check out one of the two books. Uh, this is the one that we're gonna use next time, Eat Your U.S. History Homework. It's a great book. Not only does it teach you about U.S. history, uh, but it also has recipes that are really easy. So if you have a small child or children, you can make some recipes from this book and see what it was like to eat uh, the foods that people ate uh, when the country was first establishing itself. Uh, it's a fun group of uh, recipes and we're gonna be doing a couple of simple recipes or at least one simple recipe next week. So it'll be a little bit of a cooking challenge. Uh, if you wanna pick up the book or you need more information on how to pick up the book, uh, just give us a call at 559-2970 and come to the library. If you don't already have a library card, again, you can get a library card or just use your existing library card and you can check this out. So we have this and hundreds of other items available at the library. That concludes today's lesson. Uh, we'll be back next Thursday and be sure to follow us on Facebook and remember that you can uh, continue to check out books and DVDs and get a library card even though the interior of the library is closed. Just give us a call, we're still here to serve you and we have lots of activities still remaining for the rest of the summer. See you next week.